the harsh reality of Norris's future in McLaren. While the title of being the surprise package early on in the season was awarded to Aston Martin, right now at this stage with only five races left in the season, we can say with certainty that the most pleasant surprise this season is McLaren. The massive turnaround was unbelievable, and maybe even the most optimistic fans would not expect a team to fight for P4 in the constructor standings after such a bad start of the season. However, their star driver Lando Norris now faces the harsh reality which may or may not be detrimental to a very promising team. In 2023, McLaren made a remarkable jump mid-season, transforming from a struggling team at the back of the grid to a regular presence on the podium. However, they have not yet secured a Grand Prix victory, and in order to compete with Red Bull in the upcoming seasons, McLaren must achieve what Lando Norris refers to as their next developmental milestone. Yet, this task is no small small feat, as it means that they have to address a persistent issue that has plagued McLaren for years. Simply put, McLaren cars have proven to be challenging and unpredictable to handle throughout Norris's five seasons with the team, and he isn't alone in this sentiment. His teammate Oscar Piastri wholeheartedly agrees, just like their former drivers Carlos Sainz and Daniel Ricciardo, with Ricciardo even facing considerable struggle, nearly jeopardizing his F1 career. Norris characterizes the McLaren as delicately balanced on a knife's edge, and when mastered, the car showcases remarkable speed, but one small mistake can lead to significant challenges. In contrast to Max Verstappen, who seems capable of pushing the Red Bull RB19 to defy the laws of physics at his command, Norris and Piastri find themselves less at ease in the McLaren. Therefore, while McLaren continues to pursue greater downforce, recognizing it as a key performance factor in F1, their next objective is to enhance the car's drivability, and Norris believes that achieving Achieving this consistency is crucial for McLaren's prospects in challenging Red Bull in the future. For where we are, for what I feel like we still want to achieve, for what we have done in the season before we really focus on the smaller details, even for what we have a lot of, it is small details that make this big difference," he added. But the smaller details in terms of making the driver a bit happier, rather than just making the car quick. But like I said the other day, I'd rather have a quick car and a tricky one to drive than vice versa. A slow car to drive and a nice car to drive. I think this want of making the car a bit more drivable, a bit more rounded, I think that's almost the hardest task to achieve, because it is so difficult to do this without compromise. It's such a difficult thing to have the front end strong here, but then not to be too strong that you struggle on the exit, because then the rear needs to be better. While he might not always vocalize his dissatisfaction as strongly, there's consistently been an inclination not to shy away from acknowledging his mistakes or offer excuses, and this has been a recurring theme throughout his F1 career, a sentiment echoed by his team leaders. Regarding the discussion about feeling pressured by Piastri, one could argue that the qualifying errors might indicate a desire to outperform his teammate. However, if these mistakes were indicative of any decline in performance, his race results contradict that idea, and despite a challenging start in the sprint, Norris rebounded impressively to secure third place. Moreover, in the actual Grand Prix, he demonstrated superior pace compared to Piastri, climbing from 10th to 3rd. This doesn't align with a negative self-perpetuating cycle, but rather that Norris is still operating at a high standard. Beyond anything else, it seems the pressure arises from a deep understanding of the car's capabilities, particularly for a driver who has, in the past, readily admitted to his mistakes, even when ahead of his teammates. McLaren team principal Andrea Stella offers perhaps the most insightful perspective. He believes, above all else, that Norris feels it's crucial to unequivocally assert his accountability, rather than resorting to the approach adopted by some drivers who often seek external factors to attribute to their performance. Lando is such an honest person, and he perpetuates this honesty in every kind of relationship, including the one with himself. He wants to make sure that if he gets it wrong, he gets it from the holistic point of view. He doesn't want to look arrogant, he doesn't want to look like, I'm not acknowledging that I could have done better, so I make it very clear," Stella said when asked about how hard Norris is on himself. He wants to make sure that if he gets it wrong, he gets it from the holistic point of view. He doesn't want to look arrogant. He doesn't want to look like I'm not acknowledging that I could have done better, so I make it very clear. 
However, Stella went on to highlight what is perhaps the real concern for Norris, which is a question of moderation. Self-criticism is a good and indeed necessary process if a driver is to fulfill their potential in F1, but the key is that it does not become counterproductive, and Stella implied that Norris still needs to calibrate this to ensure that it has a positive effect. That's perhaps particularly relevant for Norris, who has, in the past, said he suffered with some self-doubt rather than being fortified with the impregnable self-belief that appears to characterize Max Verstappen. What Stella describes there is effectively one part of building experience. We gotta have in mind that Norris is still only 23 years old, albeit in his sixth season of F1, and has already proven himself among the best drivers on the grid, and he's yet to win a Grand Prix, but has racked up 11 podium finishes, and the first victory is surely only a matter of time. And it can't be far off given McLaren's remarkable progress, which will not only allow Norris to fine-tune that self-criticism, but also test a breaking point whether it is in the right window, where it allows him to recognize areas for improvement without weighing him down and becoming counterproductive. The McLaren car handling problem appears to have been further complicated by the 2022 ground effect regulations, as they amplify the details of the interaction between mechanical and aerodynamic characteristics. This was due to the necessity of generating downforce across a wide spectrum of ride heights, but what truly matters is whether McLaren understands the problem and the underlying causes. Without such insight, a solution will remain out of reach. It could mean that the team has yet to fully grasp the depth of the issue, given that it has persisted for so long. However, a decision was made to prioritize enhancing downforce over correcting these traits with this year's car. As Norris pointed out, the goal now is to enhance the car's drivability, and Stella doesn't anticipate significant changes in this regard for the current year. But the hope is that the 2024 car will present a new dawn. Addressing and correcting this issue in the business is a complex undertaking, one which is likely to require a series of solid adjustments, all of which must come at the expense of performance. As Norris appropriately phrases it, it's like a delicate juggling act. He also conceded to harboring doubts in the past regarding McLaren's capacity to make the necessary changes. A lot of it is small details which make this big difference. Smaller details in terms of making the driver a bit happier, rather than just making the car quick. But this one of making the car a bit more drivable, a bit more rounded, is almost the hardest task to achieve because it's so difficult to do this without compromise. It's such a difficult thing to have the front end good here, but then it not be too strong on the exit because then the rear needs to be better. It's more like a juggling act rather than just adding things everywhere. The juggling act is one that's very difficult to achieve. Let's suppose McLaren does hit a breakthrough with the 2024 car, achieving the improved drivability that Norris envisions and moving away from the knife edge handling. Would this make it a contender against Red Bull? Potentially, it's impossible to predict the relative performance of next year's cars. However, McLaren has demonstrated clearly that it excels at generating substantial downforce consistently with these cars, and while there may still be room for further gains in lower speed corners, this remains a core area of improvement. This year's progress has been nothing short of remarkable, coming from the recognition of a critical limitation in its floor design late last year. As for Norris, he must ensure he uses the self-criticism to sharpen his skills and not drag himself down. What's more, while Piastri isn't, as some contend, the trigger for this tendency, given it has been evident for years, he is a potential compounding factor. Add that to the rise of McLaren and expectations that Norris will emerge as a consistent challenger for race wins, and it's a testing set of circumstances for Norris, but it always will be at the sharp end of F1. And far from being a weakness, Norris's attitude and approach should be a valuable weapon, even if it still does need a little adjustment. Do you think McLaren will manage to fight for the top next season with Norris as the number one driver, potentially? If so, for which spot? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and we will see you in the next one!